Hi, it's Mike with The Daily BM. On this episode, we talk about effective communication, understanding, and overcoming miscommunications. I hope that you enjoy this episode, and remember, like and subscribe. Hey, good morning, fuckers, and welcome to another Wednesday where we bitch about women. Only kidding, ladies. Calm down. Don't get worked up. We're not bitching about you. We love you. <laughs> Don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Daily DM. Every, so every, every boyfriend either A, put their earpiece in, or B, went like this. Honey, these guys are assholes. Just trust me. That's, you don't want to hear yeah, this stuff. It's Go in the other room. She's like, oh, no, no, no. I want to hear what these two assholes say. Uh-huh. Turn that shit up right now. Turn that shit up. Because <laughs> you know, um, you ever, hey, wait, before we before we continue on with the subject today, because I know you got you're bringing in a pretty good subject to talk about. You ever notice that though, too, when like your guy, like when a guy friend calls, you know, a certain guy friend or whatever, your woman's ears perk up a little bit more, and they want to kind of like they no. act like they're not listening, but you know they're fucking listening. No, back in the My day, wife doesn't do that. No, I meant back in never. the day with girls. No, I've never had I've never had a woman like you that. You never had any dates like that? Like you never date anybody like that? Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, I have. Nope. Where those ears perk up and they're like, eh, when the hell are you talking about now? Psychotic ones do you? Oh yeah, dude. I, I I seem to always get the sociopaths over time. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> that was my dating life sociopath one oh one. Um <laughs> So I thought I thought a fun topic to discuss would be um, something that we all seem to struggle with. Um, your mom and age. Yeah. <laughs> no, I go mean, ahead. The, Sorry. She's not exempt from this problem. So yeah, <laughs> but it's called, it's called communication breakdowns and okay. understanding and, and being able to overcome the miscommunications that happen. So what I kind of want to talk about is, you know, some of the common communication barriers that men and women have and discussing some strategies to improve clarity, active listening and empathy in the conversations. Okay. So starting off, you know, one of the things is, I don't know how many times this has happened to you, but have you ever noticed that when you're talking to someone and we talked a little bit about this with our guest on Monday, um, Mm -hmm. where the person is trying to come up with the solution to your answer or their rebuttal while you're talking and they miss the entire point of what you're trying to say because they are honed in on the very first words that came out of your mouth. And that's what their defense was about when that wasn't even the main gist of the conversation. Has that ever happened to you in um, your relationship? Oh, where do I start? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you, you know, it's funny that you said that that literally just happened this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, and I, you know, I love my wife. You know, yep. I do. It's just sometimes she'll, you know, she'll, she'll say to me, oh, uh, you don't listen to me, but it goes both ways. You know, right. uh, I was, I was, I was still explaining something and she totally got defensive on it. And I was like, I'm not done. I was like, I'm, I said, if I, when I'm finished with how I'm explaining this, it's going to make sense. I was like, but you're, you're taking the very first things that I said and automatically wanting to get into defensive mode and attack it, you right. know? Um, where if, if, if then once I finished, it was funny because the facial expression changed, right? Because once I finished, it made sense, but I mean, it was right. like, it seems like, oh, it's an accusatory thing, but I'm explaining something. So yeah, I'm right with you on that. It, yes. It, it happens to me all the time. And it probably wasn't even going in the direction that she thought it was going in when she first jumped no. into the conversation. No, not at all. It, 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 and yeah. again, uh, not that I'm any better. I have a tendency to do that myself, you know, but I'm trying to get better at that mm-hmm. where I'm trying to listen. Like, like, especially like if you're saying something to me, I want to listen to the whole thing before I react. Right. And, it, and it's before really hard. You make your, before you make it. And we do it on the show sometimes. Like we want to get our point out so quickly that we try to jump the gun and try to talk over each other. And we don't allow the other person to get their full statement out you know, before we are like, oh, let me add my part of the story. So right. one of the very first things that you have to start working on um, if you want to have effective communication you know, with your significant other is active listening. 
And basically what active listening is, it's fully concentrating, trying to understand and responding and remembering what's being said. So it's very, very important that you do those steps in active listening because oftentimes, you know, someone can be talking and you're daydreaming and you're not paying attention and you miss what they say. And then they feel hurt because they're not getting the response from you that they wanted because you're somewhere else. You're doing something different. You're not there. Or like we just said in the example before, you've already, they've, they've already, they're saying what they're saying. You jumped in defensive mode, rebuttaled what they were saying. And that wasn't the main point that they were trying to get across. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like what you just said, you know, but yeah. it, it it's the conclusion. They're already right. summing up the conclusion before I even told the whole story. <laughs> mm-hmm. So one of the things is, um, and we might have mentioned this a little bit on Monday, but it's going back. It's it's mirroring the other person or parroting what they say for clarity. So like an example, you know, if, if your wife is like, man, I'm really warm and you go, honey, um, you just said that you're really hot. And she says, well, no, I didn't say I was really hot. I'm warm. Okay. So you're warm. So, you know, it's the difference between the nuances, like that's important. So like, it's supposed to be the feedback loop. So basically you mirror what they said so that way you can understand it. And they basically say, yes, that's correct. Or they correct you. And then you can move on. That's the first, one of the first components of being an active listener. It's like, okay, I understand what you're saying. This is what I heard. And they say yes, and then you can move to the next you know step in the process, which would be finding the um, proper response to responding to what they want to, what they're asking. Because now you've you've mirrored what they said, you've gotten clarity that that's what they're looking for, and then now you can give them a response that matches what they're looking. So you're not telling them the wrong thing. Um. And then it's remembering what you said and then actually doing it so that way there's a building of trust and you don't have the trust falling apart because there's some, there's nothing worse than having a conversation with somebody and you feel like you have this great understanding. And then the very next time they do the exact same thing again because they didn't remember what they had talked about or what they agreed to. Because I know I've had that in past experiences where you know I've – had a conversation, forgot that I had the conversation, had the same issue pop up, and then been like, oh, shit, you're right. We did talk about this, and I had to hear I did it again. So it's remembering I, I am notorious it. for that. Honestly, mm-hmm. I am notorious for it. And, I, you know, I, I, I think the only fix to that – okay, so like I, I started using the reminders in my phone. Just for yes. instance, like when we're having conversations, I started writing things down. Like I noticed in sometimes when we're in meetings, I'm not writing things down. I'm just sitting I'm, – I'm listening. But I'm, but I'm not actively listening and I'm not writing it down actively at the same time. So that way I can recall it later because we all get busy in our lives, including our wives, you know, or our girlfriends or whoever it is, your, your significant other. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so do you pull out? So here's the thing. When you're having a conversation, you know, it's something important and you need to remember it. How do you remember that? Well, how, I what, think I you mean, should. I think, I mean, okay, here's the situation. Like if you're sitting there talking to somebody, say you're talking to your wife, okay. okay and you're asking her to do something for you. Or, or you know, it's important <laughs> to you. Oh, okay. and then she goes, "Hold on a second. Let me get my notepad or my note notes on my phone, and let me jot this down so I don't forget." Is that going to make you feel like she's really taking it serious, or not? You know, that's a good point because I would literally take her serious, one hundred percent. Because now she I know she's, and t- said, now she's taking that level, that next step to writing it down. And now right. I'm feeling that certain uh, importance. So she's taking ownership of it. And that's – I. so I think you're going to be able to – if you do that, you just have to make sure that you communicate why you're doing it. You're not pulling your phone out because you're distracted. You're saying, this is really important to me. I want to make sure I write this down and take a note of it so that way I can refer back to it later so I don't forget because I have a bad habit of forgetting. So – That'll make them feel like you're really taking it seriously. And then you just got to make sure that you actually don't forget. Like you have to review your notes and stay on top of it because then again, if you break the trust, you break the trust. See, it, and let me let me capitalize on that too, uh, what you're talking about, because what – or interject, however you want to put it. Um, sure. The thing is too is I've noticed that 
if I do that, I'm usually setting a reminder and I just do a shorthand note. So that way I can come back yeah. in that reminder and I can put long note in, yeah. you know, and then once I do mm-hmm. that, then I say, okay, this is the date I need to be reminded of this. So that way I can get this done on so-and-so date. And then you don't forget it. And then you do it. So that's great. Now, while you're actively listening, some there's some tools that you can do that really make listening better. Okay. And for the other person, the first thing is, is maintaining eye contact. Uh, and several studies I've read, it says, look into the left eye and focus just on one eye. Don't do the, the shifting back and forth, you know, where you're, you're doing the, the eye, your eyes are doing this. Focus on one eye and just intently on that one eye. Usually it's the left eye. Um, and I don't know why that works. I haven't done a lot of research, but I have noticed in my own conversations that it does make a difference when you focus on one eye and you look intent as opposed to shifting between the two eyes or trying to stare at both eyes at the same time. Now, I have heard something more fucked up. I'm just going to add – I'm going to add to this even because we're being serious, but I am going to break this up yeah. for a second and not be serious. But it, it, it has worked. I read a long time ago that mm-hmm. you look at the one eye. And then you move to the lips on a woman. Yeah. Then you move back to the next eye and back down to the lips. That's and you rotate a, that procedure and that gets in the woman's head. That's that's different than active communication. That's actually in seduction. Um, Correct. That's a seduction tactic, which is different from what we're trying to do. Because we're trying to take them seriously and have <laughs> but active <are> we? <laughs> communication. We're not trying to seduce them at this I mean, moment in time. Come on. Let's face it. At the end of the day. I mean, At the end of the can. day, we yes. do active listen so we can get seduction going and get what you know what we want out of yes. it too. So that sometimes. is that is a tactic. It's a different tactic. Yep. Okay, so go um, ahead. I just wanted to throw that in there and say, hey, I like yep. where you're going, but if you start looking at my lips and then going eye to lip to eye to lip, you and I are going to have a talk. <laughs> avoid avoid interruptions. Um, there's a study that I read recently that even having the your phone upside down on the table in front of you creates an environment that feels less productive and less um can like connected with the other person the person sees the phone on the counter even though it's face down upside down it's still there as an interruption so don't have the phone anywhere visible and make sure you have it set to where it's not interrupting you don't don't pick up your phone you know stay in the moment even if the moment's uncomfortable don't go to distraction because that creates a bound, you know, a, a wall between you and the other person, and they get upset because now they feel like you're not being taken seriously. That is an issue that I have in my household with my wife. Like when she starts to feel uncomfortable, she'll have a tendency to pick up her phone. And I have to remind myself that this is her, you know, f- flight mechanism because the conversation that we're having is uncomfortable. So, you know, that's where the grace and empathy part comes in because if you realize that your, your partner has uh, trouble dealing with certain, certain situations, then you can give them a little bit of leeway because you know that this is a coping mechanism. So that comes on you as the the person talking to not get offended that that person did it. Now, if they're constantly doing it for no other reason than other to ignore you and they're not actively engaged, then that's a whole other problem. But if you're having a difficult conversation and they need that break, it's important that you realize that. And at that point, it might be good to say, Hey, do you want to take a little bit of a break and we can come back to it? Because you may have overwhelmed them, especially if it's an in-depth conversation. But avoiding interruptions is really important. And it's also important, like when someone's speaking to you, not to cut them off. But as a speaker, you also have to give a time after each thought for the other person to respond. You don't want it to be a monologue, a ramble. You're listening to The Daily BM. Right, Brad? I was just listening to you. (laughs) Yeah. No. I was, you know, it's funny that you said that because you're so right because we do have certain people that we know that like to ramble and it becomes a monologue. And so it's hard to stay focused when that Mm. happens. So I guess, so what's the polite way? To intervene then, because you, you said it's it's okay, not you, you shouldn't interrupt them. But when is the point to interrupt them when it's becoming so long and dragged out? The interaction that you know, you're having with that that's individual. A really, that's a really good uh, question. I think that it depends on what the situation is and what the topic is. If it's something that's in de- like in deep and they're in the middle of it, like uh, they're on a, a thought process. 
mm-hmm. and they're not rambling or lost or confusing, then let them finish and get their thought out. And that's where the next step comes in, which is, you know, reflect and get clarity. Mm-hmm. So I'm just expanding a little bit on the, you know, how no, to implement I, 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 tips and you. techniques. So if it's something that there's like a lot of information coming at you and then you, and they're not, you know, it's not a situation where if you stop them, it's going to derail the conversation, but mm-hmm. you can say, Hey, I'm not, I'm not able to keep up with you. Can we go, can I ask you a question about this part? Cause I didn't understand this part. And if I don't understand this, I don't think I'm going to understand the rest of it. But you know, if they're, I mean, if they're monologuing for like 15 minutes, then that's a huge problem. <laughs> <laughs> but if they're just throwing a lot of stuff at you at one time, that's where the next step comes in, which is the reflect and clarify. So let them get their whole statement out, no matter how long it takes. And then you reflect and clarify. Hey, listen, like you, you just sent a lot of stuff and this is what I picked up. I picked up X, Y, and Z. Is okay. that what you were, is that what you were wanting to talk about? Is that what you're trying to convey? And they'll be like, no, you missed this, this, and this. Okay. So let's slow down. Let's go over that part. Because I'm really trying to understand where you're coming from. Because this is where the next step comes in, which is empathizing. You know, but, where it's but before you move on to empathy, before you move yeah. on to empathy, well, I'm going to go back so, to the clarity. I was going to say because I just want to yeah. say you said clarify, so I just want to add yeah. uh, one more thing to you and get your opinion on it. So mm-hmm. uh, I was going to, I was going to, going to crack a joke and say, "Do you even know a woman?" But I'm only kidding, ladies. But I'm just saying. When you do stop them and say, hey, I want to be clarified, then how do you avoid the, well, oh, here we go. You know, Mr. Know-it-all wants to freaking, you know, da-da-da-da-da or whatever. Because you're you're not offering solutions or answers or anything. You're saying saying things such as, okay, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. Okay. You're telling me just facts, X, Y, and Z. Like say she's having a problem with Sally at work, you know. So I I just saw I'm understanding – you're telling me that Sally's a bitch and she's like, well, she's not really a bitch. She's more of a whore. Oh, okay. Gotcha. (laughs) Okay. Now I know where you're at. You know, like that, like it's like clarity. Okay. So now before, (laughs) yeah, now we know that Sally at work is a whore and not a bitch. Okay. So why is she a whore? All right. Well, you know, because she slept with everybody's husbands. Well, she didn't sleep with me. So what's the problem there? <laughs> you know, like, you know, but anyway, it's like, it's, Look it's up literally Sally's like phone that, just, clar- <laughs> just clarifying. It's not offering advice or recommendations or any of that type of stuff. It's right. literally just reiterating, parroting, or mirroring what they said to gain clarity and make sure you're understanding correctly. And okay. then the next part is that goes in line with that is empathizing Mm -hmm. like understanding what their perspective is because everyone's perspective is different and it's their own truth so that's why you can have two people with two totally different stories and both of them feel they're 100 percent being truthful it's because it's their perspective you know it's seeing the same thing happen but from two different angles so depending on how you're viewing something and your life upbringing and everything else that jades what your perception of the events are, you know? Yeah. You like know, if you come, I, yeah. Go ahead. go ahead. I was gonna say like, if you come from an abusive background and you see somebody hitting somebody, you might jump immediately into like, Oh, that person's beating on that person. But if you come from a playful family where, you know, pushing and shoving and doing stuff like that was just jokes and good time. You would might be like, Oh no, they're just having fun. You know? So it depends on – they could both be right because they're both witnessing the same thing. It's just how they're internalizing it. So it's to kind of understand and bridging the gap of what their perception is and how it's affecting their reality so that way you can get closer and understand what you're both trying to communicate from the situation. That makes sense. So you had a question for it? Yeah, I was just – I was thinking on the empathy part, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. when you were talking about, you know, you have to have empathy. Uh, That's – as of late, it's been tough for me. To have yeah. empathy, uh, you know, I, I used to have a lot of it, and I just feel like from day to day, people drain that empathy out of you. Yes. Uh, so how do you overcome <laughs> that? You know, if they're um, if they're draining the empathy out of you, like, huh, I don't feel sorry for this motherfucker. Oh, shit, you know. So what you have to do that? So basically, so that's a, we'll just sidebar here for a second and go into that, and then I probably got like maybe another fifteen minutes, not fifteen, maybe another twelve minutes of stuff to cover for this topic. But sidebarring into that, that's where your gratitude comes in in the morning and doing your gratitude exercises, because basically what's happening is is you're going to bed every night with your tank empty 
And then right. you're waking up the next morning with your tank empty and people are trying to draw from you. You're not taking the time yourself to fill your own tank. And you do that through gratitude, you know, and what that means is sitting down and thinking of all the things that you should be thankful for, that you have your health, you know, you got a roof over your head, you've got food, you've got family that loves you, you've got, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is to make you feel good about what you have. Because often we fall into this trap of, well, I don't have this, I don't have that. And then you feel sad and miserable as opposed to going, well, man, you know, I have this. Like you get to wake up every day in a house that's air conditioned. You know, there's people on the planet that don't get that luxury. You yep. know, you get to wake up every day feeling safe. You know, there's not someone standing over you trying to hurt you. You know, there's so many things that you can be grateful for. And when you start looking at that going, you know, man, I got a roof over my head. I got AC. I got food. I've got, you know, people that care about me. You know, I got people that if I don't, sh if I'm not showing up, they're going to be calling and going, Hey, where, where are you at? What are you doing? You know, like that kind of stuff that helps you build your your gratitude tank back up. And then when you need to give empathy, you can give it to somebody else because you know, they're hurting and there's something missing because you've filled it up on your own. And that's something that, I mean, even I, I think everyone struggles with that, but that's what, you know, works the best is gratitude. And the quickest way to get out of a funk is helping somebody else because you can't be miserable and help somebody at the same time. You just can't do it. Like it's, it's impossible to do. Like the minute you help somebody, it pulls you out of your misery because you're doing something for someone else and you feel like you're useful. So if you start feeling that way, then go find somebody to help and help them and you'll feel better about yourself and you'll feel better about the situation. I mean, it's just, it's amazing well how that works. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, going back to communication and overcoming it. And this is, this next part's for ladies and for men. We need to be very clear and concise on what we're trying to communicate. So if you want to have a big talk, be specific. So use specific language instead of vague language. You know, don't, don't say, I feel like you do this all the time when they don't like say, Hey, when you do this on this day at this time, or when you did this at the specific time, it bothered me because that's more relatable than saying, man, you're such a slob, you know? <laughs> If, you know, when somebody goes, you're such a slob. Yeah. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not a slob. I'm very clean. But they go, hey, I, I, it really bothers me when you make your protein shake and you leave it in the sink with the lid off and you forget to put water in it or rinse it out because it starts to smell after a couple hours. You know, when you get back and then when you get back from home work, it's, it stinks. You know, and I come home first and it's just nasty. Like, I don't want to deal with this. Like, that's specific. OK, hey, no problem. I can fix that. I didn't realize it was doing that because I was because I get home and it's cleaned. You know, because you clean it right. because it's where you get home. So it's being specific as opposed to being vague. So don't don't be like, hey, you're a slob, because that's immediate defense tactics and is accusatory. You know, right. so you just talk, be specific, you know, provide language and then always try to use simple language. Don't <laughs> try to use big words if you can avoid it, because <laughs> I can't do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Or, do you understand you know, or my jargon. brain capacity? Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Or. Or, you know, or like terminology that's like industry specific or something that they may not know because sometimes people can get upset because you make, make them feel like they're an idiot because they don't understand what you're saying. And oftentimes that's when pride comes in and they're like they, – they're not in their head yes in agreement, but they don't understand what you're saying. Right. Because they don't know the terminology. Correct. So just you know, have, ask questions and then provide examples. That helps you be clear and concise. Like I said a second ago, you know, like be specific and provide examples. And then on – Verbal communication is super important, especially in conversations. So try to avoid things like crossing your arms because that shows you're being closed off. If you have your arms open, that means that you're inviting and you want you want their information and their input. When you close your arms like Brad just did, it all of a sudden makes you feel shut off and distant. Um, make sure that you're minding your tones so you're not like raising your voice and getting upset. You're not doing the squinting with your eyebrows, you know, like – it's important that you try to be as calm and respectful as possible. And if you get to a point in the communication where it's impossible to do that, it's okay to say, hey, can we just take a break for a minute? Because I need a few minutes to collect myself because this is really important to me and I really want to get this resolved, but I'm having a little bit of a difficult time right now processing it and I need a few minutes. Made a great point, man. Other, yeah, that's what uh, I'm going to I'm gonna interject right there because that yep. is a true ass statement right there. Mm -hmm. Um, I can tell you 
the one thing that my wife and I have implemented is I need 20 minutes yep. and we, and we, and we, and we step away from each other, whether I leave, get in the car and go drive somewhere. Or if we get into that heated of a discussion, you know, where neither one of us feel like it's going anywhere. We take a timeout. That's what we call it. 20 minute timeout, mm-hmm. man. And then we just people yep. come back and then we can, that way we've had a chance to clear our minds and then um, convey what we really want to say. Cause obviously it's starting to escalate. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so good that you guys implemented that. Cause that's one of the best things you can do. Like instead of letting it get to the point where it's boiling over and you're screaming at each other, it's like, let's take a quick break and work. Let's go work it out. Um, the next, you know, next thing you can do is, you know, it's also important going back again to clarifying. It's just giving feedback and paraphrasing what the other person's saying. So giving constructive feedback is good during a conversation. So basically what, what that means is if they're doing a really good job explaining it, acknowledge it. Say, listen, I really appreciate that you took the time to clarify, explain this because I, I completely understand what you're trying to present. This is how I'm taking it. So I just want to make sure this is what you're getting. And then asking them for feedback on what you could do better for communication, because it's a, it's a learning experience when you're communicating with people. It's the, it's the art of going back and forth. And when you're in a relationship, it's something you guys can grow into because, you know, we've, we've all been sold the fairy tale. Like there's the Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect out there for us. That's going to be the exact person we need every single moment of every single day for the rest of our lives. And that's just not true. Not at all. Not true at all. <laughs> there's going to be hardships. There's going to be problems. There's going to be miscommunications as because you're basically two lives working in this one. And it's how you work through those that make you stronger or tear you apart. So it's important yep. that you constantly are asking for feedback on, hey, what can I do better? You know, as far as communicating, like, is there things I'm saying or the way I'm saying it? You know, is it bothering me? Bothering you? It could just simply be your tone because. Maybe you're coming across too authoritarian, so maybe you need to lighten it up a little bit. Maybe maybe you're not coming across authoritarian enough, and you need to be more masculine in your approach to the conversation. So that way she feels safe and secure because you are portraying that's important to you and that you're going to take care of it instead of being meek and, well, you know, uh, yes, uh, you know, like, okay, yes, I got this. I'll take care of it. And then the last important part, is probably the most important part for me is your emotion, emotional regulation, you know, making sure that you keep your emotions in check. So the way you do that is by staying calm, breathing, because have you ever noticed that in tense situations, people have a tendency to start holding their breath or breathing shallow. So then what does that do? It elevates your adrenaline, elevates your stress, and it elevates your heart rate, which in turn triggers fight or flight. And then you end up having an argument. So if you're just breathing through it and you're staying calm, then you can have a communication. And, you know, when you're expressing emotions, it's, it's okay to show that it's something bothering you emotionally, but never let it get to a point of violence. You know, if you get to a point where you feel like you have to punch the wall, it's time to take a break. Like you shouldn't let it escalate to that. And if you are one of those people then you need to figure out how to an- do some anger management training, you know, so that way you don't get to that level. I'm also going to say that, say this statement yeah. and add, and add to that s- statement. And that is, if you have to put your hands on the, 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 the other significant other, regardless mm-hmm. of who it is, it's probably time to reevaluate your, rela- reevaluate your relationship in the first place and get out of it. Because if it's escalated to that point where you're going to, where you're thinking of putting your hands on somebody, that's just not an anger thing at yeah. that point. That's a, that's a, well, that's a, I don't like you anymore. Yeah. I was talking more to the point where you see guys, they get so mad that they punch the wall and they put the hole in the wall. Right. And it's not because they physically want to hurt their woman. It's because they are so frustrated because they can't communicate at the level that the, that their woman is. And they feel like they have no other way to get this emotion out other than to punch something. And they don't want to punch their woman. I mean, that's not even on their mind. No. But they need to get it out. So they punch a woman, like, you know, or the woman throws plates or she smashes stuff because she's mad. Like, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking, I wasn't necessarily, the minute that you, yes, the minute that you feel like you want to physically hit somebody, you should not be in that relationship. Yeah, you should get out. Yep. And if someone lays a hand on you, that's never okay. Like, the minute someone lays a hand on you, 
you need to get out of the relationship because it's only going to escalate if because they're not in a position to self-regulate. I mean, there's a chance, but there's also a great chance that you might wind up dead. So at that point, you need to take your safety into serious consideration and get out of that situation as quickly yep. as possible. 100%. Um, and it's important when you're communicating to also use I statements as opposed to you statements. So I feel like this. This is how it makes me feel as opposed to you are doing this because that's accusatory. And right. when you start accusing and pointing fingers, people get defensive. But if you're saying I, me, they're more open up, more open to having communication about it because you're not accusing them. You know, like it really bothers me personally the smell of the protein when I come in, it's been sitting in the sink all day and it's stinking. Like it, it makes me gag and it, it makes me feel sick. That's a lot better than going, man, you're such a fucking slob. Like, can't you pick your shit up? Like what the hell is wrong with you? Like, it's disgusting. Like, which one are you going to be more likely to help the person? The first one or the second one? Probably the first one. Cause you're like, I don't want to make you sick. I don't want you to throw up, you know, like, yeah, that's okay. We'll get it straightened out as opposed to being like, Hey, you're a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know we ran a little long. We had a couple segues, but I think that was a very good topic um, as far as something that people need to talk about. If you want more um, information about it, you can go to like Psychology Today and type in, you know, key points for effective communication. Um, you can also stop by Mind Tools, uh, the Very Well Minded Institute, and then um, Skills You Need is another good source. And there's also the Harvard Business Review. If you go to the Harvard Business Review, you can look up on their search engine for topics on effective communication and um, emotional regulation. So any one of those sites is a great source and you can always just Google, but just make sure you're getting landing on trusted sites. Yeah. As I say, make sure you're getting the information. That's absolutely yeah. what needs yeah, to be heard and, and seen. Correct. Right. Yeah. Man, that was a great topic, man. Um, yeah. Thanks. I'm glad you, I'm glad you talked about that because you know, that's always been a hard thing at times, man, is just communication period with your significant other, or you're even even business partners, friends, whatever. I mean, it it all relates the same, um, and it, it is very difficult <laughs> to um, navigate those seas at times, for sure. Mm -hmm. So thanks for yeah. sharing it, man. Because I, I didn't expect that to be today's topic. You know what I mean? So that's awesome. Uh, yeah, communication is key. It's important for any relationship, and it's more than just your intimate relationships. It's all relationships require communication, and the more effective yep. you are at communicating, the easier it is for you to have those relationships. So damn, damn skinny. You know, I think you know, take some time, invest in that skill set, and it'll pay off. It'll pay in droves. Um, yeah, and for God's and, sake, don't put your fist to the wall, man. Just remember, it cost yeah. a lot of money to replace that shit. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, I, I had some of those issues. You know, when I felt misunderstood, it felt like you know I always wanted to hit things. Yep. Um, and that's part of the reason that I got into martial arts because I wanted an outlet for the testosterone and the aggression. You know especially when I felt misunderstood, you know, like, and it helped me become more zenful stated because I know I can, can regulate, you know, I know, I know why there's I love a the time box. and a place for it. That's why yeah. I love to box. I, mean, I hit the heavy bag every time yeah. I get like that, I get frustrated, but I hit it. I hit it like twice a week anyway. So, you know, that and probably, that's something that, Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say, that's probably what tones it down for me, but go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, you guys, if that's, if that's a topic that you guys are interested in is on techniques on how to overcome anger management right into the show. And we'll be happy to do an episode on anger management, um, ways to overcome it and, you know, some techniques and skills that you can use in everyday life to overcome those bouts of angry, angriness. Oh, I could definitely talk about that subject, fellas and ladies. So yeah, definitely uh, listen in for that one. If you guys want to have a discussion on that. So anyway, uh, All right. Mikey, you ready to get out of here? Yes, sir. Let's rock and roll. All right, guys. Don't forget, head over to thedailybm.com. You can find us on all our socials. You can also find us on uh, Rumble and on uh, YouTube. Just subscribe over there. And uh, don't forget, uh, head over to our good sponsor over at masondangerbeardco.com. Um, it's where you can find all cool guy shit. Ladies, guys love beard oil if you had a bearded guy, and they love the waxes and all that kind of stuff. And he's actually got some apparel, too, so go check it out. And then use the promo code DAILYBM and you get 20% off. So there you go. Mikey, got anything before we get out of here? Hey, everybody. Have a great day. And we're so glad that you joined us for this episode of the Daily BM. All right, guys. And we'll see you tomorrow. We'll catch you on the flip side. Have a good one. Deuces.